Good morning. Buongiorno. It's Tom Padula from Tom Padula TV on YouTube and Insegna Booksellers. And uh, today is, uh, well, I look forward to each week uh, to the Italian lesson because we're doing Storia della letteratura in lingua italiana. Um, and uh, this is lesson number 55. Not bad. And I intend to actually stop at uh, lesson 60, take a break, catch up with uh, YouTube and, uh, you know, all the rest, because this work has to be transferred. And maybe, maybe focus on the, all the work uh, that has um, gone into these lessons in terms of lesson 1 to 20 with the Italian grammar, 21 to 39 uh, has been... Uh, on Pratica dell'Italiano, on your own or with other people. Uh, and uh, then from 40 to 60, it'll be uh, the actual um, beginnings of uh, the, uh, you know, of the language from Roman, uh, Roman times, from the Roman Empire on, onwards. So in other words, with this, you know, Latin uh, having become so important in during the, the, the period of the Roman Empire that it um, has had influence uh, throughout uh, Europe and uh, also uh, Middle East and, uh, well, I'm not sure about Asia, but uh, the Middle East for sure, and uh, through the discoveries of the Americas or rather than through the invasion of the Americas by the Europeans, uh, especially with um, Spanish and Portuguese and uh, and English and French, uh, they all have had uh, a big influence uh, in those parts of the world. Uh, even, even as far, you know, up, let's say, to Russia, the European side of it, uh, and uh, I would assume that Turkish had some influence, but uh, I'd, have to, I'd have to check, uh, you know, a bit into it as well. So la storia della letteratura italiana e della lingua is an important part of being an Italo-Australian uh, and uh, explaining these things in, uh, in English is important for the local people who were not born in Italy or the ones who have fallen in love with um, things Italian in general, including the language and, uh, uh, and everything else. You know, the food, the dance, the music... Uh, we've had a, a very good run here in Australia in terms of um, in terms of Italian, uh, because uh, obviously uh, the settlement of uh, the early migrants here, even though uh, at the beginning was a little bit, uh, you know, it was a bit difficult for some people, uh, and some people did go back to Italy. I, I, th I think a third of the migrants went back. Uh, but the ones who remained have, uh, have uh, raised their children and uh, have acquired property, they're in business, they're in, in everything. So therefore, the learning of Italian as a second language uh, is an important aspect of our Australian culture for those who are born there and who have identified themselves with Italians you know, in their heritage. And I would say that the same sort of principles apply to all the other uh, groups, uh, ethnic groups, you know, all the other groups of people that have come from various parts of um, the world and they've brought uh, their own brand of language and culture into Australia. And if you mix it all up with uh, that of the indigenous people here, we have a, a wonderful uh, family, uh, nation, and we go to, it's a democratic uh, system whereby we decide things by the vote. And talking about the vote, there'll be a state election vote on Saturday, this coming Saturday. So, and whoever wins, uh, you know, the one who wins says, keeps going for another four years, and the ones who lose, they say, well, we'll, we'll have another try next time uh, to you know, to get the, the reins of power from the ones who have um, who have had it up to now. And it's always a challenge uh, 
for people to choose the right candidate. But the majority wins, and if there's no, no majority, there'll be a minority, because um, a minority government means that the, the major party then has to uh, ask uh, other smaller parties' uh, members to, to join them and form a government. So that's, that's that. And what do we know about all this? You know, by going back to the Roman Empire, I am doing, uh, you know, we look also at the way in which uh, that empire worked. And it had, it had reached a very high degree of civilization, even though they were very, very tough, strong. Michele Drago, welcome. Uh, they were strong and they had very good bureaucracy as well. So it's 11.30. I won't, I won't mention the other things that I will do. Of course, I will do a speak, par, you know, speak from speak par la speak. I will say I will take some portions of it and, and do the words. And then, uh, of course, the, the Italian songs, uh, a bit of history, a bit of my poetry, Roman Empire. And today I'm very happy to say that I have a beautiful story uh, called Androcles and the Lion. Okay, so let's start, uh, because now we're coming to the end of um, the, the 13th century. In other words, from 1200 to 1299, and uh, Dante Alighieri was born in 1265 and died in 1321. And after this, up to lesson, up to lesson 60, I will do uh, the life and the minor works of Dante Alighieri. So I've done, I'm doing the... Uh, the Divine Comedy, we might as well conclude this year uh, with Dante's works, uh, and it's a good one. Okay, and then, uh, you know, poi vediamo, eh, la, il prossimo anno. But for now, to, from now to Christmas, this is the, the, the work that I'm doing. Okay, la prosa. Here we go. La lingua latina contrasta a quella volgare il dominio della prosa dan, du, ducentesca. Il rozzo latino è estesa la più importante opera storica di questo periodo, il pittoresco Chronicon del francescano Salimbene da Parma. Salimbene da Parma wrote this uh, Chronicon del, uh, wrote il, il, il Chronicon. Well, I haven't read it. Ricco di preziose e svariate informazioni sulla vita contemporanea. So he wrote about, you know, the usual life of the times. E nella stessa lingua sono redatte le numerose croniche ecclesiastiche comunali e imperiali. And so this sort of, uh, sort of summary of what, what was going on uh, in in their daily life was recorded in, in similar, with a similar language uh, with in ecclesiastical, uh, imperial and local, uh, local areas. Talvol, talvol gare patrio i nostri prosatori, uh, they were prosatori, they were, they were writers, preferivano il francese doi, doi. So th sometimes they didn't really want to do the Italian, they preferred to do it in French. And I forget the French, uh, uh, you know, the, the French had had a big influence uh, through, the, uh, through the empire of Charles Magno, Carlo Magno, che abbiamo visto adoperato da Brunetto Latini nel suo tresor. So Brunetto Latini, Latino, uh, Latini is another one of these great writers of the times. Well, great, the, you know, he's one of the major ones uh, that we know of. E in tal lingua scrisse Rusticiano da, Pit, da Pisa. Rusticiano da Pisa was written by, uh, by Brunetto Latini. E in tal lingua scrisse Rusticiano da Pisa i racconti di viaggi nel favoloso oriente che il veneziano Marco Polo, caduto nelle mani dei genovesi, vincitore di Venezia nella battaglia di Curzola, gli veniva facendo durante la comune prigionia. So in other words, Paco Polo fell into, it, fell into it because he found himself uh, coming back from, uh, from the east uh, to, uh, into the Venetian army, basically, uh, because, you know, you had to fight for, uh, for your comune, for, for, uh, for your place of birth, basically. And uh, 
he, he went in the prison and there he wrote, well, he didn't write it, someone else wrote Il Milione, uh, that's the, the story of Marco Polo in the East. Uh, uh, so, l'operetta composta nel 1298 fu presto tradotta in latino in volgare italico e fu intitolata Il Milione dal nomignolo che era stato già piccato a Marco per le cose enormi ed incredibili che riferiva dei lontani paesi da lui visitati. So Marco Polo, of course, was promoting the East when he came back from, from China. Eppure i viaggiatori seguenti poterono accertare che spesso non si trattava di fantasia. So, and in fact, some of the other people followed him to the East They said that whatever he, Marco Polo wrote was not his fantasy, but it, it, was, a, it was real, a real culture in the East. So therefore, he acquired historical uh, prominence, preeminence as well. So that's Marco Polo. And you can watch the series, the first two a series on, on Netflix which I've watched and I mentioned before that uh, the other three series weren't, uh, weren't done. Maybe another you know, big Hollywood producer might want to take it up. That would be a good idea because you, know, you have to employ uh, thousands of people, of course, to get this job done. Okay. Di questo periodo abbiamo in lingua volgare numerose leggende. So, leggende, the fables, myths, Troiane, Romane, Fiesolane, in other words, from, you know, Troia, Roman, and Fiesole, you know, near Florence, etc., etc., etc. Le quali, come abbiamo detto al paragrafo 4 del capitolo 3, sono in connessione del col generico epico. So, these are epic, uh, epic myths, leggende. Tra le opere storiche si possono annoverare la cronichetta pisana, quella lucchese nella quale si legge una vivace e fedele relazione della battaglia di Montaperti e di maggior rilievo la cronica fiorentina di, uh, di Ricordano Malaspini, di Ricordano, ricor, no, di Ricordano Malaspini, Malispini, that's the name of the guy who wrote la cronica fiorentina, continuata dal, di lui fratello Giacotto Mal, Malispina, continued. In essa riportate le tradizioni secondo cui Firenze sarebbe stata fondata dai Romani dopo la distruzione di Fiesole. So Florence came about because Fiesole was destroyed by the Romans and so they chose a different place where to, to have um, the people meeting and, you know, in a village and then it became a city. It's not very big really, but it's lasted all this time. Ma con bizzarri anacronismi, come ad esempio una reina Belisea che contemporanea di Catilina si trovava la mattina di Pasqua di Pentecoste alla chiesa di Fiesola alla Messa. Queste nostre antiche prose oscillano fra due tipi, uno letterario e latineggiante, la cui artificiosa complessità raggiunge il suo massimo limite nelle epistole di Guittone d'Arezzo. So, you know, the people who wrote, they also, uh, they wrote in, uh, uh, you know, in a literary way and uh, with lat lat Latin, you know, Latin being some of the words are from the Latin because obviously they didn't have all the words developed. So it's like when somebody's learning English, you know, and you don't forget, you don't know a word, so you might as well say it in the language that you know. And that's what happened to these people. So it's a bit of a mix until you clarify the whole thing in time. So Guittone d'Arezzo, that was uh, già ricordate, l'arcio popolareggiante con una sintesi agile, snodata e un lesco fresco e colorito. That was Guittone d'Arezzo. E ce ne resta un copioso esempio nel libro di novelle e di, e di bel parlar gentile, detto in seguito novellina, consta di un centinaio di racconti che un anonimo con tutta probabilità toscano mise insieme da fonti scritte diverse e dalla tradizione orale. Sono altresì vari di estensione del, dall'aneddota riferito in poche parole alla vera e propria novella. 
vi compaiono personaggi di ogni tempo e paese, dall'imperatore Traiano a Ezzelino da Romano, dal mitico Narciso al Saladino e gente di ogni cete e professione, dall'uomo di corte al frato, dal giullare al negromante e si riferiscono molti spirit molti spiritosi e, e sen o sentenziosi, prodezze cavalleresche, astuzie di sudditi e crudeltà e avvedutezze di re, avventure d'amore. My God, this is called il novellino. Uh, this was a, a this was a, with Tony Darezza. With Tony Darezza, must have done a great job. Now, ce ne resta un copioso esempio, uh, but, but this, uh, this was an anonimo. Uh, this, this particular uh, novellino was written by, uh, was written by uh, very probably a Tuscan. He was anonymous and he wrote about a lot, a lot of people. It was like, um, you know, a modern day uh, book of short stories. That's, I'd say that's what Novellino would be. And uh, I'm not sure whether I've got one downstairs. I'll have to check it. But it's, it's very, very interesting because, you know, sono altresì varie distensioni della... So he talks about uh, from, from the Imperatore Traiano, eh? Ezzelino da Romano. The, the, myth, the myth of Narciso al Saladino. Narciso uh, in, from the Greeks to Saladino in the Arab, uh, the Arabs. Uh, and gente d'ogni ceto, uh, people of every, every class and profession, from uh, the men uh, who lived in the courts to the, to the friars and the, and the priests, uh, dal giullare, the comedians, uh, uh, to the ones who were working in, uh, in, the, in the squares. Uh, Uh, to, to entertain people, uh, essere fissi molti e dall'uomo al giullare, essere molti spiritosi, in other words, they were telling very, uh, you know, comic, uh, well, you know, stories with, with some laughter in it, but also, uh, but also other types, and including the stories of the Crusaders. Astuzia di suddite crudeltà e vedutezza di re. So the, the, the relationship between kings and nobles and ordinary people in his court. So there's a whole variety of, uh, of short stories here in this uh, novellino. Be an interesting one to read, actually. Uh, so the, the people really enjoyed all this uh, uh, all this writing. The one who could write, of course, who could read, uh, of course. Uh, and they are, you know, sono pezzi diversissimi, uh, ma armonizzati insieme dal piacere di narrare, the pleasure of telling a story. People love to tell stories, and some people are better than others, of course. I'm not very good at it myself, but, uh, you know, a lot of people are, are good. They, the people can tell stories, who can stand up and just uh, rave on. Very difficult to do, to, ma to maintain such... Uh, Uh, such a system if you want to be a public persona but uh, you know I, th I think um, uh, that in life one should also access whatever has gone on before and it should be free no, no, no restrictions because otherwise uh, the people themselves will uh, will not gain much from uh, a life that's lived just in the now Really, we have to go in the past and use our fantasy for the future. And uh, can I say, we are doing that. Uh, people in general are doing that, even though some people are more inclined to one, th one way or the other. Welcome to Antonio Danzi, and uh, thank you for coming on and all your, your comments. Very positive, and uh, I thank you very much. There aren't many people like you. There are a few of them, but uh, we hope that... Uh, Uh, can I say this? I, I think that um, once I finish, you should start, uh, you, you know, you can start uh, sharing my work, uh, sharing my work because uh, a lot of people are coming on now to listen to it, but not many people actually comment or make suggestions about what they would like to know and etc. Okay, so let me go on. So in this, in this novellino sono pezzi diversissimi ma armonizzati insieme dal piacere di narrare a cui doveva corrispondere nei lettori un ugual piacere di ascoltare 
e le figure pulitamente delineate si muovono nell'atmosfera diffusa da un linguaggio leggiadro, rapido, schietto. Altra raccolta importante è il libro dei sette, dei sette Savi, tradotto dal francese, ma di origine indiana addirittura. Ed è da notare che vi si ricorre all'artificio di premettere al complesso delle novelle le circostanze che dettero occasione alla narrazione orale di esse, espediente che fu poi imitato dal Boccaccio nel De Camerona. So we learn from the past, and Boccaccio of the Camerona took from il libro dei sette savi uh, to write his De Camerona. And up to now, I didn't know about this libro dei sette, de sette savi. So, you know, uh, we're getting a little bit uh, passing on knowledge to others in, in Australia. For me, it seems to be my, my you know, my pleasure. Uh, and I'll regard this as a job in a way. Uh, why not? Ed era notato che si ricorre all'articolo. Ok, Boccaccio, che troviamo anche nella celebre raccolta di novelle orientali Mille e una notte, One Thousand and One Night. E con ciò possiamo accomiotarci dal 200, salvo che ci resta da discorrere dell'opera giovanile di Dante. So, what a beautiful is that we finish in this chapter here in this history of uh, literature and uh, except for Le Opere Minore di Dante and I was, I was thinking of stopping but for some reason uh, I am up to lesson 55 today and I've got another five, uh, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60 another five uh, lessons which I can dedicate to Vita uh, e Opera Minore di Dante and I, I might have to Uh, use more, you know, go faster, uh, because I'll just mention, I'll mention this. There's quite a, it's, it's quite a chapter uh, on this, La Monarchia and then La Divina Commedia. So, yes, I, sh I should be able to, to do it. And I hope that you come and join me with this uh, Vita e Opera Minore di Dante, not just La Divina Commedia. We'll talk about Dante as a literato, huh? a literary figure of his times. Okay, well, that's it for today. With, uh, you know, Storia della lingua e della, della letteratura. And I, I will, uh, of course, keep going now because we got Speak, Parla, Speak. We change tact. And we go to Giochiamo, okay? Some of the words that you can use for, uh, you know, for games. Which are the games, which are what in Italian? Will I show them to you? Okay, I'll just read them. Il tuo sport preferito. Ne ho tanti, non uno. Il calcio. Il football. La pallacanestro. La pallacanestro, not il pallacanestro, la pallacanestro. Lo sci. Lo sci acquatico, il rugby o rugby, uh, you know, Italian would be rugby, but we'll say rugby, il nuoto, il pattinaggio, lo squash, lo squash in Italian, but I think, you know, in the case of rugby and squash, you might as well keep the English pronunciation in it. La corsa, il ciclismo, il karate. Karate. Il ping pong. Il ping pong, the table tennis. So th these ones, soccer, football, basketball, skiing, water skiing, rugby, swimming, skating, squash, running, cycling, karate, table tennis. These are let's play. Then some of the phrases. Chi vince di solito? Chi ha vinto? Abbiamo vinto noi. No, ha vinto l'altra squadra. Abbiamo fatto pareggio, è in testa lui, io sono il fanalino di coda. Com'è il punteggio? Chi tiene il punteggio? So, who usually wins? Who's won? We have. No, it was the other team. No, ha vinto l'altra squadra. It was a draw. He's ahead. 
I'm the very last, what's the score? Who's keeping the score? Now, I just want to mention something here. There you are. Now, this one's here. When I show them to you like this, you'll then need them during the week. To be frank with you, I haven't received many orders for this at all. In fact, not many at all. Not even one. <laughs> Uh, that, that shows you that a lot of people are interested in Italian language only in, in words only but when it comes to the facts you need a lot of work uh, not, not work but you have to you know make it part of your life uh, in order for you to speak both languages well o leggi o impari qualcosa o canti non fa niente quello che fai basta che fai qualcosa in italiano uh, tutti i giorni mentre parli in inglese con gli altri you, you know you speak in English with everyone else for a day uh, when does this Italian come in? unless you bring it in into your lifestyle ok and some people say oh ma noi parliamo solo in italiano quando ci incontriamo ma no non è mica vero dovete parlare tutte e due le lingue perché una vi, vi spiega quello che volete fare l'altra state imparando state migliorando ma non è detto che è solo una lingua è meglio usare tutte e due le lingue e anche i dialetti perché no noi diciamo i dialetti quelle sono lingue locali lingue familiari And uh, it's quite to speak in Calabrese, in Siciliano, in Napoletano, in Romano, in Toscano, uh, in Milanese, in Veneto. Why not? Beautiful. It adds color to life. Ok, oggi andiamo in palestra. Vieni in piscina. Quante vasche sai fare? Come ci andiamo? Andiamo in corriera? Voi venite a piedi. So this one here is today we'll go to the gym. Vieni in piedi. Are you coming to the to the pool, quante va how many laps can you, quante vasche sai fare? I didn't know the word for laps. Uh, this one here says vasche. Quante vasche fai? Well, that's a new word for me too. Laps, vasche in Italian. Come ci andiamo? Andiamo in corriera. Voi venite a piedi. Attenti ai semafori, state sul marciapiede. Usate le strisce pedonali. Non si corre per strada. Eh? Watch the traffic for the traffic lights, keep the, to the footpath, use the pedestrian crossing, don't run on the road. Ma quando noi parliamo fra di noi, per esempio, li trovate per strada, cioè, oh, attento al semaforo, just to say something in Italian. E hey, ragazzi, non, non si corre per strada, uh, <laughs> e keep to, us, usate le strisce, use the, the pedestrian crossing. Okay. A che cosa giochiamo? Possiamo giocare? Let's, let's have a game. Possiamo giocare? What can we play? We can play a nascondino, a palla a muro, all'acchiapparello, all'acchiapparello, let's say. Chasey. So a nascondino is hide and seek. Palla a muro is down ball. O ball against a wall. Chasey. A girotondo. Ringa, ringa rose. <laughs> A campana, a canguro, hopscotch. A campano, a canguro. A indiani, cowboys and Indians. A cavalluccio, piggyback. Al salto della corda, skipping. Skipping. So, that's it for today. Al salto della corda, della corda, skipping. So, this book here, can I say, I've got... Uh, three books that are really, really useful for people learning Italian. Come and see me and I can go through them with you. You can go home and do the, the work or whatever. Doesn't matter how long it take. You can come back to me any time. I'm here until I'm here. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Okay. So that's it for, for that one. Now, I want to do something that pleases me, but it also should please you. Do you know this lady called Eva Zanicchi? She's an Italian singer. A very good one. I like some of her songs. And with this song here, she won the Sanremo Song Festival. It's called the Non Pensare a Me. 
And I'll show you the words. Yeah, why not? Okay, here we go. Non pensare a me, continua pure la tua strada, senza mai pensare a me. Tanto cosa vuoi, c'è stata solo una parentesi fra noi. Forse piangerò, ma in qualche modo, bene o male, tu vedrai, mi arrangerò. Anche se mai più sarò felice come quando c'eri tu. <ride> La vita continuerà, il mondo non si fermerà. Non pensare a me, il sole non si spegnerà con te. <ride> Musica maestro, eh? Non pensare a me, continua pure la tua strada senza mai pensare a me. Tanto cosa vuoi, c'è stata solo una parentesi fra noi. Forse piangerò, ma in qualche modo, bene o male, tu vedrai mi arrangerò. Anche se mai più sarò felice come quando... C'eri tu, la vita continuerà, il mondo non si fermerà, non pensare a me, il sole non si spegnerà con te. That was, the lyrics were short, therefore well, I did it twice, that's what the singer does too and they could put the music in the middle go to to youtube and look up eva zanicki she's got some beautiful songs honestly they've got such a powerful personality as well 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 done to her okay so that that was the song so we got a bit of a break so the next one the next one what, what will i do the next one the next one we're going to go to History, a bit of history. I problemi dell'Italia Unita, eh? when uh, Italy became united in 1861, uh, 17th of March 1861, uh, Italy, the, the first parliament met. Uh, there had been two wars of independence, or three. There was a third one afterwards in 1866 to capture some of the other areas of Italy. But before... Uh, just two uh, two uh, wars of independence, if you like, uh, brought about Italian unification, okay? And I spoke about Mazzini, I spoke about Giuseppe Garibaldi, I even spoken about uh, Victor Emmanuel II, the king of Piedmont. There's much about him except that he was a king. And he took over from, you know, thanks to Garibaldi, he gave him... He said, I can't handle the South. You handle it. And he said, hey, oh, no worries, mate. I will uh, handle the South all for you. And as a result of that, the Parliament then, uh, you know, practised some very prejudicial laws in order to get, um, to get the Southerners to migrate to the North and to, to, to feed fodder into the factories. So, but, you know, give and take, give and take. Now, the people went there like with the Italians who came to Australia, they lived a good life in the north, even though at the beginning it was pretty rough. And the south, as a result of the, the population of the south and the migrants, remained, uh, remained uh, underdeveloped in a, in, a, in a modern sense. But when I go there now, it's still great, the small towns. <laughs> good idea. Okay, so... La fotografia ci mostra, un, so, you're talking about that people got to the vote. Col voto i cittadini scelgono, so this is about democracy, etc. in Italy. Oggi tutti i cittadini italiani che abbiano compiuto 18 anni, cioè su 100 anni, circa 65 possono votare. When this book was written, 65 out of 100 people could vote in Italy because they were uh, over 18. Uh, I don't know, I think now it would be a lot more because they're more old people 
Ok, un secolo fa, quando l'Italia, un secolo fa, 150 anni fa, 130 anni fa, no, 140, from the beginning, from 1860 to now, yeah, it's 140 years. Uh, per votare non ci serve 25 anni. At the time, at the beginning, you, you know that for you to vote, you had to, you had to be 25 years old, at the beginning. You had, you had to know how to read and write. And very few Italians, you know, a lot of them were, were analfabeti. E possedere dei beni, and you had to have some property, otherwise you couldn't vote. You were just, you know, a, cit a citizen without importance. I poveri e gli ignoranti, cioè coloro che avevano più bisogno delle leggi, non votavano. So the, the ones who really needed the laws, uh, they couldn't vote. So they were at the mercy of the upper class. Quando fu fatta l'unità d'Italia, uno dei problemi più gravi da affrontare fu quello dell'istruzione. So education was number one priority when the unification of Italy occurred because, you know, some of the regions couldn't, the people in, in the various regions couldn't talk to each other. They spoke a different local language. Tre italiani su quattro non sapevano leggere né scrivere. This book says three out of four Italians didn't, were, could not read or write properly. Could not read or write. And of the other quarter, probably a lot of them didn't do it properly either. Fu stabilito perciò l'obbligo per tutti i ragazzi di andare a scuola. And this was occurring in other parts of the, of the world, so th there was an obligation for kids to go to school. But a lot of the parents who used the, the children in farms, etc., they didn't send them to school. It took a long time to convince some parents that their children should be at school. Not until the state said it was obligatory for, you, for the parents to, do, to send the children to school. Per far questo però occorrevano scuole, eh? but Italy didn't have in unification didn't have schools, didn't have teachers, didn't have books, e i mezzi erano scarsi, and everything else was wanting. Un altro grave problema era quello di costruire strade e ferrovie che collegassero fra loro le varie regioni. So, you know, you had to build the, the roads, the, the connections, the connections were, before the unification were rudimentary, horse and a donkey, etc. Un terzo grosso problema era quello di organizzare un esercito per difendere l'Italia. So, and they had to have uh, the army. And also the bureaucracy, who doesn't mention it here, but that's what you needed. So, transport, uh, defense, and education. Per costruire le scuole, le ferrovie, le strade e per mantenere un grande esercito, lo Stato doveva sostenere forti spese. But you need money to do this. Per trovare il denaro necessario, il governo dovette far pagare moltissime tasse. So they introduced a lot of taxes. And so, in order to make progress, you had to take from whoever had something and put it together and give it to somebody to build these infrastructures. Alcuni fatti aiutarono il giovane Stato italiano a superare a poco a poco le difficoltà più gravi. And I'm going to stop there. And the ones that, you know, uh, so some of the things that helped Italy a lot in the early days was l'elettricità, il, telegra il, telegrafo, il telegrafo e il telefono. Telegraph and telephone. Il motore a scoppio, uh, motors for cars. The workers, gli operai. And they had to be, you know, they had to learn, no? how to make the cars. And then, of course, the, the people who ran the factories, they wanted to make their profits at the expense of the workers. So, le lotte operai. And that's what we'll, we'll look at next time. Okay, so that's another one. Uh, How are we going for time? Top of, oh, yeah, we're doing all right. Parliamo italiano, we've done that one. Now, we'll do another song called Spazza Camino. This is a nice one. 
and it's a really, really a nice one. It's a beautiful story as well. Okay, so here we go. Quando in ogni paesello l'inverno viene e la neve il suo mantello vi distende piano piano abbracciando il mio fardello di cenci e pene sospirando un ritornello me ne vado lontano come rondine vo senza nido né un raggio di sol per ignoto destino il mio nome lo spazza camino della mamma non ho la carezza più tenere e lieve i suoi baci non so la mia mamma è soltanto la neve e Natale non badare spazza camino ogni bimbo un focolare e un balocco vicino io mi accosto per giocare quando un bambino mi dà un urto non toccare va a spazzare il camin tu mi scacci lo so perché il volto più bianco non ho ma lo spazza camino Tiene un cuor come ogni altro bambino. Se possiedi un tesor di un lettuccio ben soffice e lieve, io mi sento un signor quando sogno in un letto di neve. That's it. Come rondine voce. No. È Natale, non badare. That's it. Il ritornello secondo. That, that's where we finish off, okay? And if you really want to do, the, you can do the last bit, you know, the music, and then you can say, Se possiedi un tesor di un lettuccio ben soffice e lieve, io mi sento un signor quando sogno in un letto di neve. <laughs> you can have fun with these things. Okay, so that's the second song of um, this is Choral Improviso number uh, number five. Um, I'm doing quite a few of them. Uh, I'm just introducing the lyrics of a lot of songs, and I'm hoping I've noticed now that I go dancing. Quite a few people are singing the songs that uh, the the musicians or the singer pl sings at the, at the dances. Uh, it was good to, to hear. I, I like to see that more and more. Of course, it's wonderful. Okay, now we got to another guy who's. Um, we're going to get to my poetry, okay? It's called Tutti. There are two short ones, two short ones, and I will do the English as well, all right? But cheers. Tutti i giorni, this is for poetry my friend, ok? Tutti i giorni vediamo l'alba, il sole, il tramonto, la notte. Gli uomini riempiono i giorni di prove, di fatti, di successi. Ma vi è anche fra essi la sconfitta, la delusione, l'incertezza. Infine sono sempre bambini questi uomini che giocano nel cortile con gli altri piccini. E tutti li guardano da lontano e poi li analizzano con i loro binocoli umani, come vecchi che guardano indietro con nostalgia ed indifferenza. Powerful one, this one. Every day we see dawn, the sun, sunset, the night. Men fill their days with new experiences, facts, successes. But there's also amongst them defeat, delusion, uncertainty. In the final analysis, they are always children, these men who play in this courtyard with all the other children. And everyone looks at them from far away and then analyzes them with their human binoculars, like old people who look behind with nostalgia and indifference. You have to forgive me, oh, ladies, because I use the grammatical men to mean men and women. That's Italian. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, it can always say men and women, 
Sometimes you can say men, sometimes you can say women, but it applies to both sexes. Okay, now this one here is actually, uh, it's, co it's called l'acqua, and, and I identify this one here with, uh, with women. L'acqua che disseta l'insaziabile sete dell'uccellino rapace si perde nelle onde dell'infinità del mare. Goccia insignificante diventi grande nella smisuratezza azzurra. Brillano le tue delicate gote paffute sotto il sole d'estate, poi ti sperdi nel fondo marino e rimani lì sotto la sabbia a goderti la pace eterna per sempre. Drop. The water which quenches the insatiable insa thirst of the little rapacious bird becomes one within the waves of the infinite sea. In significant drop, you become important in the blue immensity. Under the summer sun, you shine your delicate puffed cheeks. Then you disappear into the bottom of the sea, and there you remain under the sand to enjoy eternal peace forever. So that's it. That's my two poems for this week. And now we go to the Roman Empire, okay? And there is a... I'm going to start with the, the actual... I'm going to do half in Latin first. And then I will give you the, the actual summary of it. Okay. Androcles and the Lion. In, this is in Latin, okay? This is how it was written in Latin. Olim in circo maximo, ludus bestiarius populo dabatur. Omnes spectatoribus admirationi fuerunt leones, sed unus ex eis videbatur sevissimus. Ad pugnam bestiariam introductus erat inter complures servus Quidam cui Androcles nomen fuit, quem cum ille leo procul vidisset, subiro quasi admirans stetit ac deinde lente et placidi homini appropin quabat. Tum caudam el clementer et blante movens, manus hominis prope iam metu examinati. Lingua lambit. Androcles animo iam recuperato, leonem atten attentius spectavit. Tum quasi mutua recognizione facta leti ibi stabant et homo et leo. Ea res tam mirabilis turbam maxime ex excitavit, androclem ad pulvinar acces accessurum, rogavit cesere, Eur ille sevissimo leo e solo per, per pecissette. Tum androcle rem mirabilem narravit. Dum ego in Africa cum domino meo abito inquit. Propter eius crudelitatem. Fugere coactus in speluncam confugi. Aud multo post ad aendam speluncam venir ic... ic Leo gemens et dolens, un, un do, uno pede claudus at claudus. I'm going to stop there. And then I'll continue after this, after I give you the story of, uh, the story here of Androcles. 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 From Aesop. This is one of the stories. A slave named Androcles. Androcles once escaped from his master and, and fled to the forest. As he was wandering about, there he came upon a lion lying down moaning and groaning. At first he turned to flee, but finding that the lion did not pursue him, he turned back and went up to him. As he came near, the lion put out his paw, which was all swollen and bleeding. And Androcles found that a huge thorn had got into it and was causing all the pain. He pulled out the thorn and bound up the paw of the lion, who was soon able to rise and lick the hand of Androcles, like a dog, 
Then the lion took Androcles to his cave and every day used to bring him meat from which to live. But shortly afterwards, both Androcles and the lion were captured and the slave was sentenced to be thrown to the lion after the letter had been kept without food for several days. The emperor and all his courts came to see the spectacle and Andro Androcles was led out into the middle of the arena. Into the middle of the arena. Uh, where are we? Soon the lion was let loose from his den and rushed bounding and roaring towards his uh, victim. But as soon as he came near to Androcles, he recognized his friend and fawned upon him and licked his hand like a friendly dog. A lion licking your hand, huh? Not bad. The emperor, surprised at this, summoned Androcles to him and who told him the whole story. Whereupon the slave was pardoned and freed and the lion let loose to his native forest. And the moral of the story is gratitude is the sign of noble souls. That's beautiful. So you know the story of Androcles now? Androcles. <laughs> Androcles. Androcle e leone. And Androcles and the lion. All right. But uh, here we go. Atque primo quidem terroris plenus latebam, sed leo cum me conspexisset, mitis et mansuetus apropinquavit atque pedem mi ostendit, quasi auxilium patens, stirpem ingentem, que in eius pede herabat ego, ego extra, extraxi ac iam sine magno timore vulnus lavi, tum ille pede in manibus mei posito recubuit et dormivit. Tres anos, anos ego et leo in eadam sperunga habita bamus e odem cibo ve, vesentes postera Postea captus amilibus reductus sum ad dominum qui uh, me statim ad bestia condemnuit. Prince, princeps fabula servi audita maxime ad birabatur androcles omnium consensu liberatus est datusque ei leo. Well, it wasn't just a plain translation like the other one. That was just a summary. And this was the Latin. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. Now that's that. And now time. 12.16. Good. Okay. Now the last song is Casa Bianca. And, this, uh, and then I'll finish off here because I, I, I've decided to give myself a few minutes to, you know, wrap up the hour. Casa Bianca by Marisa Sania, 1968 song. I think it came second. But anyway, uh, let me see if I can, I'll have to show you the words. Ok, io vi C'è una casa bianca che, che mai più io scorderò. Mi rimane dentro il cuore con la mia gioventù. Era tanto tempo fa, ero bimba e di dolore. Io piangevo nel mio cuore, non volevo entrare là. Tutti i bimbi come me hanno qualche cosa che di terror li fa tremare e non sanno che cos'è quella casa bianca che non vorrebbero lasciare è la loro gioventù che mai più ritornerà. Welcome to Assunta Lombardia. Tutti i bimbi come te hanno qualche cosa che 
di terror li fa tremare e non sanno che cos'è quella casa bianca che che ma più io scorderò mi rimane dentro il cuore con la mia gioventù e mai più ritornerà here we go back again now I'll sing that one again after I speak about life in Rome what's the difference between Rome, a Roman life and now okay so here we go most people in Rome and other large cities lived in blocks of flats three or four stories high these were built around a central courtyard and usually had shops on the ground floor. People with money to invest sometimes built apartment blocks and rented them out. Rents were high, although some blocks were so badly constructed that they fell down within a few years and whoever died, there was no compensation. In Rome, torch-carrying night watchmen patrolled the streets to keep a law and order and to check that buildings were securely locked. Fire was a problem as many people burned fires in open containers called braziers. In 64 AD, a police and fire fighting force was set up called the Cohortes Vigilum. Water was carried in pipes from lakes and rivers to the towns. Aqueducts were built to carry the pipes across the countryside. Most people got their drinking water from the pu public fountains in the streets and washed in the public bars. And they've done this up to very recently. Well, you know, 100 and plus years ago. People could pay to have pipes connected to take water to their homes. Some did this secretly to avoid paying, of course. <laughs> Many people used public lavatories like, you know, th they were uh, multiple lavatories. Uh, like some of the ones that are shown here, but I'm not going to show them to you. And they were usually on the ground floor. The city's waste was carried in sewers under the streets in Rome. There was a huge sewer called Cloaca Maxima, which still exists today. Well, I didn't see it when I went there. Pavements were raised up above the roads and there, was, there were stepping stones for pedestrians to use in wet weather. This also stopped cars from going too fast. Carts, not cars, carts. Many people had no kitchen uh, of their own. They ate a lot of, they ate a lot of bread, which they bought from a public bakery. So there were public bars, public bakeries, you know, pretty good. Taverns and eating houses. People could also buy hot food drink and drink from eating houses and from stalls in the street. There were also taverns where people went to drink wine and talk. Like the shops, these were like the shops, these were often rooms opening on the streets on the ground floor of houses. Many people had no kitchens of their own. They ate a lot of bread, which had they bought from a public bakery. Public bakeries, you know, must have been, uh, there must have been a lot of them there. Okay, now, I don't know whether I should do something else, but I'll, I'll do a bit more on, on Rome. But before that, I want to go back to Casa Bianca. Okay? Casa Bianca. Are we doing all right? Okay. 
Now let's hope that this one, this time, the song will come straight away. Casa Bianca by Marisa Sania. This time sung by Tom Padula. <laughs> and uh, whoever listens. Okay, let's go. C'è una casa bianca che, che mai più io scorderò. Mi rimane dentro il cuore con la mia gioventù. Era tanto tempo fa, ero bimbo di dolore. Io piangevo nel mio cuore, non volevo entrare là. Tutti i bimbi come te hanno qualche cosa che di terror li fa tremare e non sanno che cos'è. Quella casa bianca che non vorrebbero lasciare è la loro gioventù che mai più ritornerà. Tutti i bimbi come te hanno qualche cosa che di terror li fa tremare e non sanno che cos'è quella casa bianca che, che mai più io scorderò mi rimane dentro il cuore con la mia gioventù. E mai più ritornerà. So, la gioventù che mai più ritornerà. È casa bianca. Sometimes c'è una casa bianca che, che mai più io scorderò. So, you never forget uh, la, questa casa bianca. Mi rimane nel cuore con la mia gioventù. It's always in my heart. Right? It was a long time ago. Ero bimba di dolore, I was a child and with pain. Io pangevo nel mio cuore, I used to cry in my heart. I didn't want to go in there. Tutti i bimbi come te o come me hanno qualche cosa che di terrore li fa tremare. And so they, they did, didn't want to, to come because then there were other people who experienced the same terror of this youth. Etc. Etc. That's we can look it up. Casa Bianca by Marisa Sania on uh, on YouTube. Okay. Now, eleven twenty-six. I'll, I'll just uh, mention this now. Uh, we'll do a bit of shopping, shopping in Rome. Okay, shopping in Rome. Most Roman shops open right on the, onto the street with a counter across the front. They were open early in the morning till late in the evening with a long break in the afternoon. That's remained, that system has remained in Italy, but things have changed there lately, but it was there for a long time. Slaves were usually sent by their masters and mistresses to do the shopping for them. At night, the wooden shutters were pulled across the shop fronts. So, like now, no? We leave them open, but some of them are shut. Shops selling olive oil, olive oil were common, as it was used a lot both in cooking and for lamps. Some shops had their own olive press. The oil was stored in jars, sunk in the ground. The baker shop usually had a mill, at the back where the flour was ground, where the flour was ground. The dough was made, then shaped into round, fairly flat loaves and baked in brick ovens. To avoid the traffic jams during the day, carts bringing goods to the market had to travel by night. In Rome, there were several markets, some were specialising in particular things, such as meat or fish. In other words, markets were held once a week in the Forum, which, which was the centre of all business, political and legal activity in the town. So they didn't go see each other, they went to the piazza, to the Forum. 
there were warehouses for storing goods. Some were built near the docks so that bo boats could be unloaded easily. And that's what they did, you know, they, they went to unload the goods. Not bad. Now, stall holders used scales called steel yards. The amounts were marked off along the bar. You could tell how much something weighed by moving the magic. Yeah, you could tell how much something weighed by moving the weight along it until it balanced. Should I show you these things? These are little, I suppose I'll be able to do that. I'll just let me finish. There were inspectors called Adiles who checked the quality of the goods at the market and tested the weights and measures to make sure they were accurate. Near the forum were the most fashionable shops selling luxuries. So near the forum was the most, the more fashionable shops selling luxuries such as books, perfume, fine clothes and furniture. Traders who could not afford a shop or market stall wandered the streets carrying their, their ways over their shoulders. If a Roman wanted to borrow money, he could go to, to, to a money lender or a banker who, who would um, who charged high rates of interest on the money they, they lent. That's it. That's it for today. Yep. Well, as you can see, there's a lot of variety in this um, uh, this time in the Italian lessons now. And from next week, we'll be looking at Dante's minor works. And I look forward to, you know, to, to this. And I also look forward to the uh, to finishing off uh, uh, in lesson 60 for a little while anyway. And uh, then make sure that all this work is available to you in uh, insegna.com and also on YouTube. And of course, it, it's always there in Facebook, but then you have to go back and back and back. It's a harder w way of looking at it. So if you come on, of course, I mention your name and uh, I thank you profusely for, for a few people to come on. Uh, I really appreciate it. But the ones who are looking on, Paola Matta, welcome. The, the people who look on, uh, please, if you like what I do and you think that uh, it's helpful to uh, to adults in general, uh, you know, share my work. Who's going to listen to somebody for an hour? It's hard. But you can go up and down the program and select what you want. So if, uh, you know, you lose something sometimes, you can always go back and uh, and look at it again, Okay. On that note, thank you very much once again. It's Tom Padula from, I'm going to say this first now, Insegna Booksellers and uh, YouTube. Uh, Tom Padula on YouTube. No, I'll say it as usual. I think it's much better. Okay, this is Tom Padula from uh, Tom Padula TV on YouTube and Insegna Booksellers. On that note, ciao, alla prossima. Okay.